morning and thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I am Yori Folari and this morning I have Tulu Lokwe Ogunjiobi uh, alongside me. Tulu Lokwe is our TVC, business, uh, TVC News Business Editor. Yes, Great to have you on. Thank you very much. It's good to be here, Okari. In, in, indeed. Um, uh, we're we're going to be talking about um, COVID-19 and, uh, and banking. You know, it would seem to have thrown a spanner in the works, but uh, in due course, we'll come to that because m money is, is, is important and um, how it affects business and all of that because yeah. the banks are exposed to so many different sectors. So many. In so many so of many. them. So and um, we, so we'll look at that and the effect it is having. And then even on the ordinary person. True. You know. But True. before all of that, here we are, we're just, um, this is the commencement of the extension of the um, uh, gradual Easy. reopening easing of the <laughs> of uh, conditions for society oh. and um, it looks like uh, police in Nigeria are taking no prisoners in terms of um, how seriously they are taking this in fact um, we, there was a press release from um, mr. Frank Mba, the DCP Frank Mba, force public relations officer force headquarters in Abuja um, who was saying that um, well the inspector general of police and uh, since I'm quoting from it, let me read it directly. The Inspector General of Police um, has ordered strict enforcement of the national curfew and interstate movement restrictions orders emplaced by the federal government and on. Well, in Lagos, in some parts of Lagos, we saw, you know, evidence of that. Some people even went as far as calling it um, <clears throat> overzealousness. I hesitate to use the term myself. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, doctors, uh, medical workers, you know, essential people, once they broke the curve, once they infringed on the hours of the curve between eight and six, and six, as I was saying, the police were taking no prisoners. They just, as it were, uh, moved in. Even our Ivy Kano, a reporter, yes. uh, she was actually arrested yesterday. Yes, yes. she was yeah. taken to the station. Indeed. So, we, we shall be... <laughs> So, um, in fact, we have Ivy on Skype um, yesterday uh, on, on Skype right now. Good morning, Ivy. Good morning, Mister Yori. Okay then. Uh, well, uh, I see that you are free. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, are you speaking from Vinay Police Station there? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was actually. Uh, we were released about uh, eleven uh, last night. Okay. When were you? When was the unfortunate <clears throat> engagement with the police? Uh, that that was about after nine p.m. Oh, oh, oh okay. B b because um, as as essential workers, our work does often take us. You know, uh, sometimes we have to report on 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 these matters. Uh, but what was the explanation when you? No doubt you would have identified yourselves. And I hear that you're not just the only one. Um, uh, allegedly, nurses, doctors, and other essential workers uh, were also confronted. What was the? What did you understand from the police? Uh, you know, as it is uh, with uh, uniform, um, the divisional police state, uh, officer yeah, said she was carrying out a directive. Now, what uh, what she did tell me is what I'm sure. You know, I was curious to know where was this directive coming from because what the directive we had earlier stated that essential workers were exempted and um, just. You know, without any notice, without any statement from um, the police, you know, you, you go out uh, in the night and you are arrested for, you know, um, flouting the, the coffee, which was which is usually between 6 to 8 uh, p.m. So she, 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 there was no explanation for it. 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. 8, 8 p.m. to 6 a.m., sorry, you mm. know, and so there was no explanation. All, all, all she said was she was acting on directive. Now, uh, we didn't know the directive was from the IGP's office, if it, if it was from uh, the AIG's office, or the Commission of Police. Mm. Yes. Mm. No, she, no, she had no um, explanation uh, for us. Well, well, all she that, was that, that, that's curious because we'd like to get an explanation. Even I, I am hearing, I'm hearing reports that uh, one of our drivers was actually arrested this morning. Um, again, the coffee hours between 8 p.m. and 6 a.m. And oftentimes, uh, people are going to have to be on the roads. I, I guess everybody knows that we're broadcasting. It doesn't matter whether it's radio, whether it's television, whatever the station. You have drivers on the road uh, somewhere between 4 a.m., yeah. uh, you know, uh, 5 a.m., which is actually getting to be late. Uh, that's the way it is. But if 
Well, as I, I was saying, I, I sort of paraphrased or I edited a bit DCP Frank Mba's um, statement. DCP Frank Mba is the first public relations officer uh, in force uh, headquarters, uh, Abuja. And he had put out a statement that the Inspector General of Police had directed strict uh, compliance. Uh, no doubt this has to be sorted out, right? Because, um, as you said, there's no statement as to whether have those exemptions being withdrawn uh, we, we don't know any of that i think uh, for me it was like uh, changing a goalpost in the middle of a match and um you, you i think it is responsible for them for them to you know give, give us enough uh, enough enough notice yes if you are giving a 24 hour notice or even a 12 hour notice you know those of us on essential duty, we know that we, we, we are not supposed to be mm. out at that mm. time, you know. And uh, so, so whatever how... I form that decision, I have no idea. Okay, so how did it all end when you said at about 11 o'clock when you were all, you know, able to go on your way? Uh, what? what did, did she just wag her finger at you and say, you know, be, be careful, take, take what? Or what? Or what? Or, or is, is, it, is the matter to be continued? She just came to some of us were behind the counter and some uh, okay. some were actually taking to. <laughs> they, so they are taking your belts and those who are wearing ties, they're taking your ties. <laughs> yeah, so they, they actually wanted to take my phone and I was like, no, I, I'm not going to give my phone because my office needed to know where I was and my family. So there was no way I was going to release my phone to the officer who was, um, you know, at the counter, she just came and announced, "Okay, all of you, please come out, come and take your keys, and you're going to sleep in your car till mm, 6 a.m. tomorrow morning." I was like, okay. "So we're going to spend the night in our cars." You know, that that was that was um, her announcement before she she later after some like about 30 minutes or so, she said, "Okay, she now has directive to release everybody." Uh, you know, um, that that was it. And so you could continue home. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, just, uh, I imagine you would have kept your fingers crossed that you don't meet another checkpoint. Mm -hmm. Whereupon those that didn't have this particular perspective would uh, go ahead and arrest you again. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, yes. think... Uh, I think. I think she said uh, they were asked to relax the. Uh, uh, they were asked to relax the curfew for relax the enforcement for like three hours, and after that, so I, I don't know, but that's exactly what happened. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Ivy, uh, for, for coming on. And uh, well, stay, stay with us, if you will, um, because you're on Skype, so we can actually do uh, phone calls as well while we're at it. But it, it looks like, uh, Tolu, it, it looks like the, the police is serving notice that, um, look, uh, be, because remember, when, in, in extending it, the part of the statement uh, by the secretary to the government and the uh, head of the uh, PTEF uh, on COVID-19 had said that we, it, the, term, uh, the, the period would be used to explore more persuasive uh, measures, among others, to getting people to conform strictly with all those regulations. Indeed. I was also at the office yesterday at 11 p.m. because I was, at the, I was on the news at 10.30 mm -hmm. to read business news as usual. Mm -hmm. So I was also scared, Omar, you know. <laughs> but before then, this release had come in from uh, Frank Umba saying that it doesn't really affect essential workers, they mentioned journalists, health workers. I think there was just, uh, maybe the communication, there was a kind of misunderstanding mm, somewhere. Mm, Somebody mm, passed an information, because yesterday I watched the PTF, which I do on daily basis, and uh, the SGF, Boss Mustafa, was out to commend the media on what they've been doing for weeks, saying they've been staying out despite the challenges to cover this on daily basis and let people see what's happening live Without, they're not paying for this. Mm. We pick it live every day for hours. We know how much that costs us to run our generators, to run our systems. And at the end of the day, we're now on our way home. You now stop us and say we shouldn't go home and sleep in the station. I think there was a misunderstanding somewhere and they had to quickly correct themselves because they were not going to be able to manage it. How many of us were they going to arrest yesterday? Indeed. When we left the office yesterday, myself, Asuko, Nife, me, we're on convoy. And we left together. We're going to take all of us. Yes, we take so all just of us. Arrest so everybody. we just go all so to the station. Find, and a, we... find a whole wing of your so of that your was what happened yesterday. For us. But that was it. as you said, it's probably <laughs> and as Ivy was saying that um, there were subsequent uh, communications. Yeah, to, of course. Uh, to, to relax of it course. a bit. Uh, but still, you know, yes, there was a bit of a, a, a bitter taste there. But yeah, of course. The, the police were serving notice, no doubt that look. 
let, let everybody just see how it is now. Uh, we don't want them to exceed their powers or of go course. overboard. Of course. Uh, but I think they were <laughs> showing that this is urgent. It's just that you have to go about it in the right way. Yeah, you yeah, know, I because think so. journalists are about, uh, they, they are the people that are actually informing and adv advising people as to what's going on, how yeah. you have to be, what the situation is right now. Can you imagine just now taking those guys off the street? Now, you're talking about journalists for once. Doctors, for, for Doctors. goodness sake, nurses, these are frontline people. So, as you say, something must have gone wrong yeah, with the something must have gone wrong because you know? I even hear medical workers threatened to, 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 to down tools today if this continues one way or the other. So, I'm sure they are waiting, but maybe with this counter directive from Fankumba, I'm sure maybe they'll go back to work and uh, okay. um, wait to see if anything pops up again today. Actually, we weren't, we weren't able to get a phone call in. We were trying, but um, somehow phone calls. We wanted to put uh, uh, one or two phone calls on this particular subject. But Ivy, we're going to have to close the shop, as it were, on this particular subject. But thanks a million for coming on, and I hope you're not the worst for wear, uh, having been behind the counter uh, for a few <laughs> <laughs> minutes. Okay, Ivy, stay yeah. safe now. Yeah. Bye. All right, then. Okay, so we, we'll, we'll take a break. Stay with us, please. We'll be right back. And then our focus is going to be uh, banking amidst COVID-19. Okay, welcome back. And uh, as we said, we will try and look at um, uh, banking uh, in, you know, a, a pandemic. We've never had this uh, kind of uh, an experience before. Uh, Tolu Lope uh, Ogunjobi, business editor at TVC News, he's here. And um, uh, we have um, with us on Skype Mr. Teslim Shitabe. Mr. Teslim Shitabe is an investment banker and financial journalist. Tolu, yeah. uh, Mr. Teslim, good to have you. Yes, pleasure being on your program this morning. Yeah, a, a lot has been said uh, about the banking sector at this time with COVID-19. And a um, lot of people are talking about the job aspect of it, employment aspect, and of course, uh, what's happening across board. Now, let's start with what are the odds uh, for our economy and indeed the banking sector in the light of several interventions uh, undertaking to support the economy as a whole? Okay, that, that, that's a really important question to ask. Um, well, let's look at it from this perspective. Uh, the projections concerning the economic growth in 2020 is that the Nigerian economy will decline by between 3.4% uh, and 3.5%. Right. Now, given that, we're also facing a situation where oil earnings are expected to decline by 90 percent. OK. We're also expecting a situation where the Federation Allocation and Committee uh, funds are going to decline to both the federal government and the state governments. We expect that custom revenue will drop from 1.5 trillion, estimated to about uh, 1.2 trillion. Um, okay, and then at sub-national levels, this is an area that will hurt sub-nationals. At sub-national levels, we expect that the value-added tax would also decline slightly. And uh, why it's only going to be slightly is because there was a 50% increase in the value-added tax in 2019. Okay, so um, that will ensure that the VAT uh, revenues won't decline too severely. So we're expecting to see VAT drop from about 2.1 trillion earlier estimated to about uh, two trillion okay um now coming to the question of how this affects the economy obviously with the gdp declining by over three percent uh, general business activities are going to be uh, moving along a slow lane in 2020 and with uh, business generally slowing down you should expect that banking activities will also slow down significantly um now does that sign of the Nigerian economy as being in the dumps, not necessarily. Sometimes when you have situations like this, where you have um, a virus or what I call a black swan creating challenges, <laughs> within those challenges are also opportunities. And that's the mindset. What is critical is the mindset, the mindset that we have towards what is happening to us. It's a period for reset. We need to reset our minds and then reset the economy okay so yes the major economic indicators are not looking too favorably you've seen inflation go up significantly that's after it had declined 
for the first part of 2019, Q1, Q2, there was a general decline. And in Q4, we started seeing inflation nudge up a bit. By Q, Q1, 2020, we're looking at inflation that's gone close to 14%. Uh, and it's likely that it could get up to 18%. Mm. Okay, so we are in an inflationary environment. Um, we are also in an environment with a slow growth in the economy. So you are in what the economist calls stagflation. Oh, okay, have... Mr. Shitabe, uh, I was going to ask, just as you got to there, um, in your opinion, would recession, would an economic recession be on the cards? Oh, certainly, certainly, certainly. Um, an economic recession is defined as two negative quarters in growth of uh, GDP. So we haven't seen the Nigeria Bureau of Statistics release Q1 figures yet, but it is my guess that Q1 figures will see that we grew negatively um, for the first quarter of the year. Uh, second quarter of the year is even going to be worse. Uh, economic activities are slowed down even more severely as a result of the lockdowns and the partial lockdowns that have occurred. Supply chains have been disrupted majorly. Manufacturing concerns are not able to produce at uh, even 50% of capacity. So we, yes, we will see definitely a, a slowdown in the economy in both Q1 and Q2 of 2020. So uh, is there going to be a recession? Certainly. Now, now how, how much can be done uh, to insulate the bank's economy from uh, such shock as government is looking towards reopening the entire economy? Uh, insulation is going to be very difficult. Uh, and the reason why is this. Even if you expand liquidity in the economy and demand moves up, there are challenges with supply chains. A lot of Nigerian manufacturing takes root from imports of raw materials and uh, equipment. That disruption is still in place. So even if you have the money to buy, you're not likely to be able to get those equipments. You're not likely to get the raw materials. So yes, you've got money. Yes, you want to buy the raw materials. You want to buy the equipment, but they're not available. So your money really is neutralized. So expand, taking the typical Western approach towards um, staving off a recession might not work. Mm. As a matter of fact, what you could actually be doing is stoking inflation. So you see a rise in inflation, and you still see a stagnation in the economy. So you're, all you're doing is digging a, 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 you're in a hole already, and you begin to dig. And all that does is to push you deeper into the hole. So that solution may not work um, favorably. But like I said earlier, what you need to do is to rethink your strategy, rethink the approach to business generally, and perhaps we think the overall economy. And, and in I'm this sorry. regard, Mr. Shitabe, in, in, in this yeah. regard of what you've just said, um, I, I wonder if you just give us a, something of a, an overview of what you think the banks are going through, um, because there would have been plans, you know, yeah. uh, December last year, maybe November, December last year, about, look, 2020 is going to be our year, that kind of a thing. And then COVID hit. Um, you know, it's... Some banks are having, you know, now banks can't afford the operations, especially in the light of how they can do business during COVID-19. Uh, okay. uh, uh, great question. I need to say something very quickly here. The impact of what is going on currently, the economic shock, is not going to affect all banks in the same manner. And the reason why is quite simple. Some banks, as early as 2019, um, uh, Q2, had already started strategies to look at how they can do their businesses differently. They had already set up foundries, tech foundries. They have already set up uh, sandboxes, digital sandboxes. So they had already tested how they were going to move forward with a leaner staff strength. A clear case in, the, a clear case in, point, in point actually is um, Access Bank. Okay, it, it has about 36 million customers. And realizing that it has to service this kind of customers it, it was quick to the take and understanding that it's not going to be business as usual. You've got to provide services, you've got to provide user experience, you've got to provide user interfaces that provide excellence at the lowest possible cost. And you're not likely to do that with a horde of employees. What is likely to take ascendancy is technology. So there are banks like that. Um, I, I think ETI also did a similar strategy. But when I say this, it doesn't necessarily mean that people will lose jobs in a broad sense. Yes, some jobs will go. 
Some back office jobs will vaporize. That's the truth. Some front office jobs will also disappear. However, there will be the creation of jobs in other areas. Okay, you're going to see an expansion of jobs in the area of um, information technology. You're going to look at artificial intelligence. You're going to look at coding. You're going to look at big data. Okay, you're going to look at machine learning. People with those skill sets will definitely thrive in the banking sector under this administration, under this period of time. Um, you're also going to see that agency banking will expand. In other words, rural banking, penetration technology, penetrating rural areas to get more people into the banking system and enhance uh, financial, financial inclusion. So what we're going to see is a shift in how banking is conducted and a shift in the relevant skill sets that banks will be asking for. Okay. Okay? So the, you might have a lot less pen pushers and a lot more techies. Okay. You will also likely have foot soldiers who will be penetrating the rural areas a lot more. You know, so yes, jobs will get lost. Okay. Unfortunately, this is, this will be unfortunate, mm -hmm. but it is the reality. Mm -hmm. We can't okay. wish it away. Uh, uh, so, so, let, one we, moment, please. Uh, one moment, please. It, uh, uh, sorry to interrupt you, uh, Mr. Shitabe. Uh, okay. uh, sorry to and interrupt part you. Of that solution is reskilling, uh, retooling, uh, and. <laughs> Okay. Reorientating I guess you can't really hear. Thank you very much. Yeah. There was a bit of a lag there. Yeah. But just to use this opportunity to say that um, we've been joined by Mr. Mukta Mohammed on the phone. Uh, Mukta is a stockbroker and um, financial analyst. Uh, uh, good morning to you, uh, Mukta. Good morning, Mr. Yorin. Indeed. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, oh, it's a pleasure. Okay. Um, uh, just before we continue, uh, you, you, you might have... You, you, I hope you heard what uh, Mr. Shitabe was saying there, the new direction uh, that banks are going to yeah. have to uh, accommodate. Uh, in that regard, what is, what, what is your thinking as to how well they are doing preparing for the, um, you know, the technology uh, emphasis that banks are now going to have to have? Because um, whereas it's okay for some, you know, people, it's much more than, you know, just being able to buy something off Jumia or off Amazon. It's much more than that. We're talking about export and import and dues that have to be paid and banks not having the right portals so that you could do a lot of that kind of a stuff along the lines that Mr. Shidobe was talking about. Uh, how far do you think the banks have come uh, in terms of catching up, because all of this caught everybody by, by surprise, catching up with the needs of uh, banking in a COVID-19 era? New reality. <laughs> I, I think the banks were prepared before now. The, the, the way um, I look at what they, they've done, and when you look at um, COVID-19 came too suddenly, maybe too soon for them, but they have prepared because if you, if you listen to most of the bank NDs and, um, during the week and after the easing of the lockdown, they keep talking about the realistic um, um, uh, projection in terms of their... Of their um, electronic platform, which they say they have beefed up, they have done a lot, they have invested so much in electronic platform. I was talking to one of the bank um, chairman who was telling me how much they have invested in electronic platform even before now. They thought about, like Mr. Shitabe talked about, the money agent in the rural area, how they are brought in technology there also already. So some of these banks have seen before that time and they were already working towards it. Okay, I've got to interrupt you now. So, so, sorry about that. Uh, so, platform, uh, you realize that during the lockdown, though there might be issues when you saw people rush into the bank at the beginning, at the beginning of the lockdown. Okay, Mukta, thank you very much. I, I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but I've got to do so. Uh, and also, you know, uh, to say to Mr. Shitabe, stay on the line with us. Mukta, please stay on the line with us. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Still here with um, Tulu Lokwe Ogunjobi, TVC News Business Editor. And we're looking at um, how uh, the scope and quality of banking is going to be affected by the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic. We have Mr. Teslim Shitabe on, the, uh, on our Skype, and we also have with us Mr. Mukta Mohammed on the phone. Um, to, to look back to oh, Mr. Oh, right. Mr. Mr. Shidabe, I, I like to ask you because in, in all of this, uh, would you say in effect that um, some positivity and efficiency uh, can emerge from COVID-19? Yes, certainly. Um, th there's no doubt every business is going to have to rethink 
how it is going to conduct itself over the next few years. Um, I, I, I am not amongst those who consider COVID-19 to be a temporary phenomenon. It actually is a long-term phenomenon. It is not so much long-term in, in, sense, in the sense that there won't be a vaccine or that the, 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 the medical aspects of the challenge will not be handled. It's long-term in the sense that it will require a fundamental shift in the way we think about doing business. Indeed. Indeed. Well, I wonder yeah. what, um, you know, business people are already complaining about, um, you know, interest rates. Um, central bank, I don't know, central bank, hey. <laughs> that, that is in the purview of central bank, right? Because they influence that tremendously. Yeah, they do. Uh, they do. Now, uh, everybody is doing their bit. Uh, do you think it behoves central bank to influence uh, you know, a downward I, look at commercial the, banks. Uh, 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 you know, to persuade commercial banks to begin to look a bit more downward. I, what, what, what are what, what are the parameters here? Sorry, I, I lost you briefly there. Could you repeat that? Okay, um, interest rates have always been yes. a problem. Businessmen have complained about them being too high, and um, now I wonder if you think central bank needs to come in and see what it can do to influencing downwards those interest rates, because everybody is contributing something to this crisis that we find ourselves in the midst of. Yes, uh, that's an question, interesting question. Now, like I said earlier, we are in a trilemma. Okay, what do I <laughs> Never mean mind that? dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never mind the dilemma there. That we've got actually a trilemma. Now, you increase money supply. That's the way you, you, you reduce interest rates. You have to increase money supply. But you've got a weakened foreign exchange position. So people have more money in their hands and because we are very import dependent in terms of our industrial and manufacturing inputs, that means that there's going to be much more pressure on the Naira. And so you're going to see a devaluation of the Naira, and then you're going to see an upward rise in domestic prices. And one of the responsibilities of CBN is to ensure that prices don't get out of hand um, and that you have a stable, non-inflationary growth. That will not be able to happen if the CBN puts more money into the system. Okay, so that's one dilemma. Do we in increase the amount of money supply, high-powered money, what the economist calls M1, or the other aspect of money that they call M2, which involves credit? Now, do we allow more credit? Do we put more money in the system? Now, if we do that, we have a problem with the external area of our economy. Exchange rates decline. Now, yes, could we, for instance, say, okay, you know what? Yes, live with inflation. There's a rule of 70 okay and it's very simple if for instance you allow inflation to grow at say 20 percent per annum in three and a half years every single naira worth in your pocket is worth no more than 50 kobo can we live with that reality that's a, that's a nightmare scenario that's a nightmare scenario and as i said it's a, it's a real trilemma you know um because if if we have a problem with because just as cbn is going to do that don't forget you've got the fiscal authorities also borrowing money the fiscal, I've already talked earlier about the decline in, um, in revenues. So the government is going to have to fund the budget one way or the other. Mm. Where will it go? Mm. Already, we've seen that the uh, bond market, the recent April, April auction was oversubscribed yes. by about, I think it was 459% uh, or thereabouts. Mm. And that tells you that there's still a huge amount of pent-up demand for government instruments. And mm. in a situation where the government is saying, look, there's a high level of foreign exchange risk based on the COVID situation. We are coming back to the domestic market to borrow money rather than going to the foreign market. So when they come back to the domestic market, what's going to happen? They're going to compete with the private sector. Economists call this crowding out effect. In other words, you're going to borrow money from the domestic money market. That money you borrowed is no longer available to the, uh, to the private sector. So interest rates will now be forced to go back up. So it's really a complicated situation, indeed, really. Indeed, uh, Mr. Shilabe, I, I have a final question for you, for me. But I want yes. to talk to Mr. Mukhtar now. Mr. Mukhtar, he brings me to the fiscal and the monetary side. We, we've talked about the synergy before now. Do you see them synergizing at this time where we really need them to work hand in hand to make sure that they deliver dividends of democracy to Nigerians, particularly with regards to banking, finance, and um, the entire economy? <laughs> So, you know, like you said, we've talked about this on your program before. I don't think they have, um, I don't think they are trying to, they are, they are going to do that because, they, like uh, Mr. Shitabe said, they are in a dilemma. 
and the physical authority um, seems to have a lot to do. All they think about the physical authority is go and see how we can get more money and try to do um, infrastructure and other things. But now, the dilemma is the, even the CBN himself are saying, look, you should be careful how much you borrow before now. Now, this is the challenge now we have. Remember that our foreign debt at the time that we had the exchange rate, uh, official I mean, CBN exchange rate was 305. That was what they used to calculate our foreign debt. Now, our foreign debt, the CBN have brought that margin to 360. That is their rate now. So now what do we see there? Now we now see that our foreign debt have automatically gone up because tactically the data have been devalued. So when you look at that, then what is the physical authority are supposed to do? They are supposed to provide the enabling environment for, 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 for the growth of the economy, especially in the area of employment. And unfortunately, they, they, have, they are also stranded in that area because they are not able to uh, do, do, do that. Because they don't even have, they don't even have the, they don't even have the finance to do that. So both sides are going to think of what they have to do. But I think um, borrowing is the only option, and they've already um, started borrowing, and like they are borrowing in the domestic uh, market. And Mr. Shadabi said it again: they are going to be competing with the private, uh, uh, private sector who definitely need this money more than them because the private, the private sector are the ones that build the informal sector of our economy, which it seems to be the driver of our economy. So if they are competing with them, then we still have a lot of challenge. Where so for are, me, I, I, think I beg your pardon for jumping in. in dilemma, uh, sorry, the, uh, Mukta. The monetary authority and the dilemma. The monetary authority Borrow. wants to fight inflation. The fiscal authority wants to put more money into the system to develop infrastructure. So both of them will need to look at where they can meet. Okay, uh, let, let me just jump in here. We're talking about borrowing, and I saw that uh, Mr. Shitobi was nodding in agreement when you were speaking. Where are we going to be doing this borrowing from? There are people who are scared that I hope you are not going to be knocking China's door again. Um, we'll just talk about that area, Mr. Shitabe. Okay, great. Uh, for me, why do we need to borrow? And let me be a bit avant-garde here. Um, a bit, some might say cavalier. The federal government of Nigeria and federal and the various state governments, the subnationals, have a lot of assets that are idle. Why should we have a federal prison sitting in prime property in Ikoi? Why should we have um, a, a federal police college that takes about a quarter of prime property in Ikeja? I'm not using this as examples. Why should state governments have high-rise um, high um, monuments in Abuja? Why can't we just simply sell off that, those assets that are non critical and non-strategic, that provides us with greater amount of liquidity. So, so, sort of look inward. Sort of look inward. You yes. know, look with new eyes because yes. Yes. this is the new normal that we're approaching. This is new normal. Exactly. Mukta, so finally, Mukta on the phone, finally, mm -hmm. your, your thoughts on, on, on Mr. Shitabe's point there, that look, borrowing perhaps, but we also can benefit from looking inward. I, I, I think I, I think I don't I, I don't I, I we we in now the federal government is going to borrow, but you need to look at the type of borrowing they are doing. If you re remember that the borrowing they did even from the World Bank, it's money that it means that money that government have even saved already in the World Bank, so they were giving them at a very low interest rate. The whole world economy is going to go into recession, whether we like it or not. Now the cost of fund is going to go down. So federal government, look when you want to sell those assets. Who are going to buy those assets? We must begin to look at who are going to buy those assets. It's the same old Nigerians that will complain because at the end of the day, it will still be the so-called money bag that people think are from government that will get those assets and mm. will keep on complaining again. For me, if you want to put up assets to, to sell, to begin to build up the economy, yes, it's, 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 it's a good thing to do. But when you're talking of assets, you need to look at those assets, how critical are they to your national security? Also, not just thinking about what you can get from them. So that's where the challenge is going to come from. Okay, I, I want to thank you very much, uh, Mukta, Mr. Mukta Mohammed, stockbroker and financial analyst, for joining our program. Thank you very much, as always. You are welcome. Okay.
So um, we, we we still have uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Let, let, let me ask you this final one. And how would you no, no, advise? No, no, no. He's with us. Oh, okay. He, you're he, still he, with us. Yes. Great. Uh, I'd like you to to advise sector players that maybe yet to key into this new normal, yet to strategize their businesses in line with this reality. What would be your advice to them? Because some are not set for this. Well, you know, and like I said before, I, I have a couple of views that some people might seem extreme, might perceive as extreme. But basically, every business has to rethink its business model. There is no, there's no, there's no going back to the old ways of doing things. True. We've simply got to think through the way we used to do it and see how we can do it in the different way that does not compromise our sustainability as, uh, as institutions and as organizations. Now, I give you a clear, clear uh, case. If I was importing, for instance, can I look for a Nigerian substitute and say, you know what, this Nigerian supplier has some challenges. Let me leverage this supply. Let me provide him with some support so that he can provide me with inputs at the high level that I would want to receive. In other words, there's going to still need to, there's still need for investment in our supply chains, domestic. One thing that COVID has taught us is that we can't depend on foreign supply chains. Supply chains need to be domesticated. Okay? So, a lot, and, and I can tell you, we have those opportunities in Nigeria. I mean, we're the largest, uh, we're the, look at this, look at this um, very queer situation. Nigeria is the largest producer of cassava, but we're not the largest exporter. Ghana is the largest exporter. How is that? Okay, one moment, what? please, Mr. Shitabe. I've got to bring Mazi Okorua for on, who has called him from Arochuku. Morning, Mazi. Good morning, Sayori. Good morning, uh, our analysts in the studio and uh, others, too. Morning, Honest sir. weekend, Sayori, let us face facts and face reality. See, World Bank and IMF for some moves, talk back. What was their focus about the indices and the economic variables that the world, in short, the whole country, all the sectors, should be talking about recession within this state of COVID-19? That we only talk about success maybe from 2021. But for this year, 2020, that is very, very dicey. Now, you ask yourself some ways. Some organizations may decide to go to AI, artificial intelligence, form in terms of what for their own production, which is very it is, it's applicable and, and it's what we should go through. Because you have seen about the manpower, how much are going to be with AI, you see that you reduce the cost. Now, some days ago, I was having about a woman who was thinking that SME, the small, medium enterprise, that CBN said they are giving them money, but up to today, they have not assessed that money. Now, you ask yourself, what is happening? Now, we come back to the electronic banking system, which we are talking about banking, banking, banking. banking. How many people can assess their money now in the bank? Mm. Some people, their cards have expired, and they don't have access to the bank to do what to do. Some people, you have to decide that business we check. You can't, you don't, because of the population, you cannot have access into the bank. Now, private sectors are dancing. The way forward for this country as Nigeria country. Let all the states look inwards, tap their, harness their own natural resources for now. That's a, now, you see, now it's time for okay, so, Sorry, Mazi. So, sorry, Mazi. Forgive me. I've got to interrupt you. And I want to People thank you for calling in. Farms, farms. We have to sort of ration out the time we have. Um, Mr. Shitabe, yeah. you, you were listening to that. You know, uh, would you like to comment? Yes, I, I mean, he's, he's, he's spot on. Uh, we, uh, let me take the last point he said, that we've got to look inwards. And that's the point I'm be raising. Yeah. We've got to look inwards. It's time for us to recalibrate. We've got to see a new future. We've got to see a new destiny. We've got to see a destiny that is dependent on us and not on others. That's the reality. That is a simple reality. So we've got to look inwards, recalibrate. The government should recalibrate. Private sector in the, uh, institutions should recalibrate. Everybody has to think, okay, what are the resources available domestically? So how are we going to harness these domestic resources to move our individual states, the federation, and our companies forward? That's, given that's the going fact to be the new normal. New normal. That, 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 you're sort of signaling that is going to have to be the new normal. Precisely. Because we're Precisely. not, we're, we're, as you said at the top, I think um, COVID 19 is not going away in another six months. Uh, you know, no. people, in fact, there are those who are saying that you might as well begin to think about living, finding a way to live with COVID 19. We with might not find a cure, for goodness sake. 
precisely, precisely. That's my that's my point. So how how would you dimension a world with COVID nineteen? What kind of services are required? What kind of new businesses need to be yeah. uh, Mr. Shitabe, I, I've also seen this argument. Should be looking at this. Can you hear me, Mr. Shitabe? Yeah, I've also heard this argument from analysts saying that for banks, this year should just be a year of survival <laughs> and not a year of thinking of profitability. I don't know how that comes to you. Okay, great. Now, let, let me, let's look at what happened in Q1 2020. Six banks saw their profits decline. Six banks saw marginal growth in profit. One bank has not released its Q1 results yet. That's for those listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. So it tells you that there will be differential performances amongst the banks. Some banks had started early to rethink their business processes. Unfortunately for them, their early movement, that's what you call the advantage of first mover, the early movement has enabled them to still maintain some amount of profitability. Now, those banks that were late to the party, unfortunately for them, they're going to see profits decline significantly. Wow. Hopefully, they won't make losses, but there will be a major decline in their profitability. Okay? And so, what are they going to do? They're going to rethink the whole business model. Well, there will be job losses. That's the reality. It's unfortunate, like I keep saying. It's not something I would want to see, you know, because normally in a recession, you want to grow the economy, you want to spend money so that you can grow the economy and reduce the amount of jobs that are lost. But we are in a bind. The money is simply not there. Oil prices have dipped, although they've started rising to around $30 now. But, hey, we can't rely on that. So just assume this is a new normal, low oil prices, okay? Uh, low fiscal revenues from the federation account. Um, states need to uh, generate, improve their internally generated revenue. But while they're improving revenues, they've also got to come down on costs. That's just the truth. There's going to be a slimming down of the, the, the public sector, inevitably. But there must also be a transitioning to a gradual opening up of the private sector. Um, I, I think one of the speakers rightly pointed out that interest rates are likely to go down because post-COVID-19, there will be greater liquidity. There's going to be a lot of liquidity. But how do you attract that liquidity to Nigeria? And for me, that's a very important issue. You need to make a business case. Uh, uh, okay, one moment, Mr. Uh, Mr. Shidabe. Sorry to interrupt you. Edward yeah. has called no in from Bonny Island. Mr. Hello. Edward? Yeah, good morning, sir. Thank you very much for calling in. Go ahead, please. Your observation or yes. question. I was actually listening to you on our recovery measures at a time like this, and I was listening to the first speaker. I quite agree with him when he said that uh, the other is the first speaker that COVID-19, the post-COVID-19 effect on the economy is going to be very drastic. Quite agreed. I also agreed with him when he said that we have it. We, we have to reset. Any country that wants to recover we definitely say reset moment for a lot of us and i think at a time like this we have to focus focus on our reset parameters that is exactly because i, I still believe that nigeria stands a better opportunity than even more better than a lot of other developed countries considering our untapped parameters considering our tap resources so i should think like uh, we have to focus on our growth parameters see how we can amplify them at the same time, focus on those parameters that shrink our economies. See how we can reduce them. Number one, let's look at um, talking about those parameters. Look at uh, like kind of uh, we can start by uh, kind of encouraging SMEs, businesses, local businesses, local manufacturers, thereby amplifying our GDP. If we could get fund for our frivolities and our luxuries, we could also get fund, borrow fund for this. If actually we mean business, if we mm. mean to recover. Mm. Then we also look at the other thing we also need to look at. We look at um, NEPA, for instance, power supply. If we encourage our power supply, we can do a lot with all of these things. Talking about uh, shrinking our, I mean, all those parameters that also affect us negatively. We cut excesses. Nigerian government, running Nigerian government, is consuming a lot on our, on our budget. Indeed. We look at those things. We cannot be spending that much in running government. That Thank you very much, Mr. Ward. Appreciate your calling in. I'm afraid I've got to interrupt you again. Forgive me. Um, as I said, it's all about trying to manage it so that we can get as many callers as possible. Uh, again, this is really going along the lines of Mr. Shita Bay. Indeed. Really looking inward, seeing what can be done. And then 
big government reducing the size cost of, of government, the co cost of governance. Too much. The, you know, uh, is there anything, as Mr. Shitabe was pointing out, we, we really got to begin to look inward and see what can be done to save resources. Do we need the kind of large government do we have? Do we so. need all the uh, <clears throat> uh, luxury I don't uh, think so. that is attendant on I, government? I, 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 I don't think so. I could chip in, Uncle Yori. If you look at the amount that was shared this month by the three tiers of government, it was a drop from what we used to have. Okay. So clearly, the governors ain't going to get what they used to mm -hmm. get. Mm -hmm. So definitely, they can't spend the way they used to spend. Which, so it's, it's also a new normal. It, 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 <laughs> it is part of the new normal. And Mr. as Mr. Shitabe was saying, we'll never go back to the way things were before. And it's not just Mr. Shitabe. This has been the refrain that has been coming from all True. around the world. Um, there's going to be a new way of doing business, a new way of looking at these um, uh, things. And we're talking about banking now, but hey, banking, the, the health of banking depends on the health of the sectors it is exposed to. Exactly. You know, exactly. Uh, uh, we, they're exposed to, heavily exposed to oil the and oil gas. and gas sector, uh, manufacturing, yes. uh, all the other ones that I can't even remember, yeah. services and all of that. Yes. Now, if all of that begins to go under, Hey, well, uh, banking can't exist uh, as an entity on, it's, it's on itself. Uh, I see that you, uh, you you agree with some of that, Mr. Shitabe. I agree virtually with all of that. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're spot on. You're spot on. You're spot on. <laughs> Larry in yes. Ajibo. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Thank you very Go much ahead. for calling in. Go ahead yeah. quickly, please, and keep I it want short. I to make a contribution to your program. Yes, sir. But keep it short, please. Okay, now I want to t I want to talk about this financial sector. Sure. Please, okay, please about this uh, banking something. The way they were operating, they should come out to tell us the truth. You would be to many bank now. They will attend to you. We don't know exactly what is happening. That is one. I, I want to give example. Mm -hmm. Access Bank. Most of their branches were closed, despite central bank directives. And secondly, about the police attitude, please help us talk to them. All right, they then. Thank you very much, Mr. Larry. I did say try and keep it short. You've just gone right back to the very first subject of the day. <laughs> but but Tolu, uh, he was going more towards uh, individual banking, yeah. you know, and um, yeah. some of the difficulties. I, I believe that the banks are just trying to be very careful so that um, maybe if an incident happens somewhere, they can open another branch. So that was why, you know, at first they were limited um, branches that were opened. But I think as at now, they've increased those branches. And I think it's better than before because I was also not able to enter the first week. <laughs> but now I'm able to go into uh, the bank. Okay. I'm able to do my transactions. I, is that so I think it's... Is that because you're a Tolu business correspondent? Sincerely, I had or... to queue. I had to follow the, so, the line. Okay. Uh, but it's moving and so it's getting better. Things are getting a yes. bit better. Yes. I couldn't try it the first few days. Okay. But I think now it's 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 getting better. At least somewhere around here and Ikeja. Okay. I, I, I think, think this fair. is where we're going to have to leave it. Um, uh, and we want to thank uh, Mr. Mukta Mohammed uh, who joined us on the phone Definitely. earlier. And uh, uh, thanks to Mr. Teslim uh, Shitabe who continues uh, to uh, be with us. We yeah. barely scratched the surface of such an interesting and important subject. But we want to thank you very much, Mr. Teslim Shitabe, for being on our program today. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Indeed. And uh, so, don't mm. that. That's where we're going to have to leave it. Uh, that, uh, apart from, it's you know, <laughs> indeed, apart from asking them, uh, thank you as well for coming by. Right. Uh, apart from asking them to please join us tomorrow when we'll have a fresh edition. Uh, so, on behalf of Tolu and I, be safe. See you tomorrow. <laughs>